is the difference between a consumer Gen AI application and an enterprise Gen AI application? Uh, Gen AI application might look very easier to build, but when it goes into production, if it's not very fruitful, it's just a waste of uh, company resources. It's one thing to view a podcast and quite another to feel empowered from it. Our attempt with the Fluid Intelligence podcast is to make you confidently embark on your journey of data and AI. In this episode with Abhishek Kumar, uh, I spoke to him on how we can build a Gen AI application for enterprises and what are the technical challenges that might come and how to overcome it. Abhishek Kumar is a techno-functional expert and also a manager for data science and AI at Paxman. He has been a practitioner of AI for a very long time. Recently, he has won an award uh, in a global hackathon conducted by Data Robo and AWS. Naturally, this conversation is a lot more technical and it will help you to understand the nuances in building a Gen AI enterprise application. We spoke about the skill sets that is required, uh, the infrastructure, the complexity of building a Gen AI application, the cost implications, and a lot more. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this podcast. If you are a practitioner or a person who is looking to build a Gen AI application for your enterprises, this is the perfect guide for you. So stay tuned and let's dive in. Uh, welcome Abhishek to the Fluid Intelligence Podcast. This topic is definitely interesting to talk, right? Um, before we uh, deep dive into the core of this uh, topic, I wanted to start with the basic. What is the difference between a consumer Gen AI application and an enterprise Gen AI application? The reason why I'm asking this is, as a user, I use Gen AI tools on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's a chat, GPT, Gemini, or whatever not. But when we talk about Gen, Gen AI for enterprises, where does the differentiation come into picture? What are the use cases that we are solving using Gen AI for? Okay, uh, Surya, that's a very interesting question because uh, knowing the difference between building a consumer app and uh, enterprise app is very important. Basically, because it gives you a lot of clarity on uh, how what is the range of a Gen AI application. It could be it could be used to build a, a very small scale application or a very huge, right. which is important for our big businesses to be built. But knowing that difference will help you guide in the right direction. Now, coming uh, coming to consumer apps, these these apps are basically built to be very user friendly and. Right. Uh, the main motive behind that is to for the user to consume the output easily. So when you look at chat GPT or Gemini or Perplexity, the interface is very simple. You add a question, you get your answer. Mm. So there's nothing complex about it. Right. It's very easy to consume and user is happy. But whereas when you come to an enterprise solution, these solutions are basically a B2B solutions. These are not to be consumed directly consumed by the user, but it is using users data to build a build some application which can be used to either increase the revenue or improve your workflow or things like that. What happens here is uh, the main focus here is not on uh, ease of use or, or user friendliness. It is basically to make sure these applications uh, are regulated in terms of data privacy, data governance, plus they are robust, they are very robust in nature so that they can be either uh, integrated with any system, existing system easily and it's not very complex while you are integrating with your systems. These are the main two difference between a gen, uh, consumer and enterprise solution. So if I understand correctly, what you're saying is when you're looking at a gen AI for enterprises, you start looking at right from the data, to yes. building the data uh, strategy, data management, data governance practices, and also the interface of uh, how it has to apply, apply for the enterprise users and the integration that with needs to happen systems, yeah. with uh, the systems, right? Yeah. yeah. Taking a one more level deeper, um, let's say I'm start. I'm looking to build a Gen AI application for enterprise. Okay, where do I actually start with, or even further, what do what are the skill sets that I need to have to before I start a Gen AI application? And also take me through this te the tech stack, the infrastructure that is required to yeah. to do this. So uh, when you look at a Gen AI application, it more or less similar to how you build a ML application with added uh, some added technologies or some uh, models that are specific to Gen AI. So as I said before, the main importance of an enterprise solution is to look at data privacy right. and uh, 
data privacy and how clean the data is. So that's where we start. We look at the data. We make sure the data is uh, all the regulatory body compliant. There's no user data, and you clean the data. And before that, the most important thing is to make sure that the application that you're going to build is relevant for your business use case. Will it going to either generate revenue or it, is it going to save you time in terms of the work that you're going to do because a uh, genuine application might look very easier to build but when it goes into production if it's not very fruitful it's just a waste of uh, company resources so you look at that first uh, define your problem statement define your uh, solution space and then you move into data cleaning part where you need to look at all those uh, uh, checks and balances and make sure the data is clean and then you uh, the the next step would be to get into the actual building of the model uh, now there are different ways of building a model uh, you can use a base foundational model to build a very straightforward model but usually what enterprise the straightforward model can be used to build a consumer lab because you don't need very uh, specific use case it's a very general use case but when you come to an enterprise solution it's a very specific and niche segment so what you would want to do is take a foundational model build it uh, fine tune based on your data set your customer data set your demographic data set and build a, uh, a is new it the rag that Th that's not right that's called fine tuning rag is a different concept right. but uh, it, it, this is called fine tuning taking a base model foundational model and then uh, using your data, let's say uh, you are into a retail space. So you have a customer data, their demographic, their buying habits and all of that. So you take your foundational model, teach them about your customer, your products and everything so that the answer that you come get out of that model is very specific to your need. It is not a because foundational models are very generic in nature. They can mm -hmm. answer anything and everything, but you want answer to be very specific especially in case of healthcare and financial you don't want a random answer you want a healthcare specific answer or financial specific answer and these are some of the sector where you need to be very uh, careful about data privacy because there are a lot of regulatory fines and things like that so you have to be very careful so uh, coming to tech stack uh, what you need to start with is python uh, Python is very uh, like uh, it's been most more adopted than other languages. So you have to be good at Python uh, coming to models. There are different frameworks in the market today. For example, something called Langchain is there, which is very up and coming. And you right. can use that as a Langchain is a very general specific framework. So you can use that framework to easily build your application. It's not necessary to use that framework but when, if you use that you will become easier if you don't you have to do a lot of things manually so it is up to the business need how they want to do it and uh, then you need to be very good at uh, cloud uh, infrastructure setup because these applications can be uh, need to be scaled up and down uh, very uh, randomly based on the need and once you have a cloud infrastructure set up correctly in place you can do that very very easily instead of having a physical uh, infrastructure so i think these three things the the programming languages and the framework that you need to use and the last part is infrastructure if you combine these things and get a good co combination of all the tools and techniques of for these three categories you will be able to build a good enterprise solution so is it that i need uh, i need to be aware of what what tech stack to use uh, I need to have at least a, a, a knowledge of which to use and when to use and all those. And then a little more deeper dive into uh, Python, for example, yeah. that you spoke about and also using which framework to use and fine tune to build over it is something that I, as a yeah, so, technical person I should have. So as a basic, uh, as a base, you need to know the language, you need to know uh, how Genai works behind the screen. Right. Other tools and techniques are very easy to pick up. So, Correct. for example, if you want to learn Langchain, it's very easy. Uh, you have a lot of resources that you can pick it up. If Even if you don't know at the start of it, it's easy to pick it up. Plus, you also need to know a basic of cloud infrastructure, how to set those up. And if you, uh, when you start building it, you can dig deeper into each of these categories and right. build the application according to it. Because these are very... Uh, robust in nature so how you will use and how a company b is going to use is going it's to differ a yeah. lot makes sense yeah. yeah so in the earlier uh, topic you uh, started off saying where do we start to build the gen a application from data sourcing to data quality and and modeling and all those right uh, but um, as a practitioner uh, what are the technical challenges that uh, you would face when you when you start working on a application and how do you overcome that so uh, the major hurdles that 
comes when you build a Gen AI application, especially enterprise application, is data privacy and security. That's mm -hmm. the main problem that I, I've told you before also. Uh, how do you overcome that problem is basically you f follow the guidelines that is given by, by the regulatory body and keep some checks and balances while you build the application, have some checks and balances between those processes so that you are in, in the while you are building the application, you don't miss, miss out on those things. For example, when you look at healthcare sector, uh, any PII data, which is personal identification data, should not go into any build, uh, any model building or anything. That applies to Gen AI also. You cannot, when you send data to Gen AI, uh, Gen AI models, you cannot send up a, a, a patient's data personal data with that. So you have to make sure uh, while before you go into model building, you have to maybe build some kind of model which abstract or subtracts these data out of that uh, mm. personal data from your main data frame and then you send it and you have some checks key. If the model trigger uh, find these kind of data, you have a alert system in place or something like that. Like it depends on business to business how they want to handle it. But the main concern is about uh, data privacy and security. Uh, other thing is scaling scaling of these models. Now, uh, some of if, if the business is big and their customer base is big, these models need to be scaled uh, to a high scale, and you cannot have a physical infrastructure for that. You need to have a very cloud agnostic infrastructure. Maybe uh, you use AWS or GCP or Azure, but you need to be make sure that the infrastructure is set up properly and it does not break when you scale up your model. So these are two main uh, hurdles. I think as a practitioner, people face while building a Gen AI application. Is there something around the modeling itself that we, we also typically? Uh, when you when it comes to modeling, I think uh, like I said, when you do when you are doing a fine tuning of a model, uh, you need to make sure the data that you are going to fine tune on is very robust and very clean data. It sh it, there should not be some randomness to it. Uh, it 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 should relate to your customer your products if it's not that your your output of the model which you're going to build or the application which you're going to build is not going to be at par so you need to make sure the data that you're feeding is right. also good because it's a concept of garbage in garbage out mm -hmm. so the, the how you feed the data yeah, you will get the yeah. the same output yeah the more i hear from you i feel like it all goes to the foundation which is i mean it always looked glamorous that we are yeah. building a lot of models but then the foundation, the core part of the work comes from the data itself, exactly. right? the, build, so. the data quality, data, uh, the right data that you spoke about, garbage in, garbage yeah. out and all those and, and abstraction of data, uh, if it's a PI data, uh, uh, masking it and, yeah. and all those. So it's like a lot of work around the data than the algorithm itself. Yeah, that, that's actually true for any model that we work in in the data space. That if your data is not good, your output is not going to be good. Right. Same applies to Gen AI applications also. Yeah, so we understand that uh, Gen AI applications can become computationally intensive and that also creates a lot of complexities in, in building these applications, especially from a commercial standpoint, yeah. right? There's tokens, there is con configurations that is involved. You also spoke about the, the cloud component that coming in and the, with surging cost, how do you go about uh, optimizing this for both from an efficiency standpoint and an effectiveness standpoint? When you look at these applications, uh, as I told you before, one of the major uh, concept is called transfer learning. What yeah. that means is, uh, if you take a foundational model, it, it's been trained on everything and right. everything and it, it is very heavy and uh, the size of that model is very huge and you cannot use that model straightforward because the kind of uh, answers that you are looking for, specific answers to your niche, your uh, customer, your product, you will have to take multiple tries and that increases the the kind of tokens that you're going to use. So mm. what you do is you use a concept called transfer learning. You build, take that foundational model, take your data, train it, and that the output of that uh, training is going to be a smaller model, but very specific to your niche. So now when you ask a question, you might get that answer in first or second try. So you don't have to use a lot of uh, tokens. So that reduces your cost because every word, every character has a cost associated Correct. to when you use these LLM models. Second uh, problem would be, I think, uh, cloud compute, uh, cloud infrastructure. Again, these models or the application which you build are large scale, uh, large scale applications. And when whenever you use these applications, if you are continuously deployed and uh, it is continuously used, it's going to cost you heavily. So what you do is you you build a cloud, cloud infrastructure around it and you only pay for the compute that you use. Whenever someone is using that application, you pay for that part alone, not 
for our 24 hour service so cloud helps in that way so so uh, that that's the that's the two techniques that we can use to uh, tackle the complexity of a uh, of a solution and the cost associated to those solutions uh, abhishek i also know that uh, you are working on working on some interesting uh, use cases especially in healthcare using gen ai i know you cannot reveal much because there are a lot of things work in progress um, but why don't you take uh, take me through some of the key things that you can share sure so uh, in healthcare i think we have been working for in couple of uh, do, a couple of use cases and i'll talk about these uh, let's say we'll take the first one which is a very general use case where we we wanted to extract some data from some reports that was given right. to us now usually what happens is uh, there are someone sitting there and looking at these reports and manually extracting doing some either we look up or something like that or search and find and things like that but what we thought we'll uh, use a gen ai build a gen ai model or a simple prompt engine to extract that data which reduces your time which, which saves time for for the for our customers and they are able to uh, roll back on that faster so that was one use case and another one is a very interesting one where we are looking into developing an application where when a client, when a doctor and a patient have a conversation that conversations get recorded and uh, uh, it gets uh, because of the conversation that is happening we want to generate prospective diagnosis and the treatment that can be done the medications that can be uh, issued so these are all helping the doctor to make decision faster so if you look at both of these application the main focus is to make it make it easier for the end user or the business user also to make their workflow easier so uh, it is not to replace them it is basically to make them uh, work faster and get the solution they need in a faster way yeah more as a decision support tool yes. rather than the decision tool exactly itself, right? yeah Really That's the main concept of Gen AI. Like, uh, people think it is going to replace the uh, jobs, but I, as a practitioner, I would say it's not going to replace the job. It's going to enable you to make uh, yeah. do your work faster and grow faster. Yeah, productivity yeah. booster. Yes, yes. Sure. exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Abhishek, for this interesting conversation. Thank you so much, sir. This was very interesting, and I think this is a, a topic which everyone is talking about. And I was, I feel privileged that. you chose me to do this podcast with you of course i'm eager to do the part 2 uh, sure so yeah. stay tuned <laughs> thank you very much uh, thank you audience for tuning in uh, i hope you would have uh, found this conversation insightful if so uh, please do subscribe to the channel by clicking on the bell icon and do share the video with your colleagues and friends if you have any topic suggestion please drop in uh, your your suggestions in the comment uh, on the channel and also write to us at contact@faxpen.com until then take care see you soon